This is Rawway State Prison, and I want you people to know at home TV that if you get up and go get a soda, a glass of beer, go to the bathroom, you might miss it. This is going to be one of the most exciting fights that y'all have seen in a long time. And Eddie Gregory won't go past round four. James Scott, the uncrowned light heavyweight champion of the world, said that. Is that convincing? <laughs> The man you just heard is James Scott, and this is his home, Rawway State Prison, the maximum security prison in Woodbridge, New Jersey. Inside these walls and bars, Scott works out in his own boxing program, but he cannot leave the walls to fight professionally. So for the first time in boxing history, an inmate is fighting a professional fight inside a prison as HBO Sports presents Boxing Behind Bars, the main event, inmate James Scott versus the number one contender for the light heavyweight crown, Eddie Gregory. James Scott is a very, very unusual man, and so is the boxing program here at Rawway. Last week, we came here to take an inside look at both phenomena, a very inside look. Stone walls do a prison make here, and inside them dwells a community of outcasts. Surprisingly, however, there is as much space devoted to a complex of shops and classrooms as to cells. And an effort of sorts is made to train the inmates in skilled occupations. For some, it's a chance to find a trade. For others, a way to pass the time. This also is occupational training at Rawway. For these inmates, this is a job. They're paid for it, as in other programs. They earn points toward parole and days off their sentences. In theory, they'll become professional fighters. It may be the most real job training that we can offer to, uh, I think, a significant percentage of our population, the, young, the youngster from, from the ghetto areas who grows up wanting to be the Willie Mays, the Muhammad Ali, and who uh, has all the ability in the world. The, the long-range effect may be questionable. But for those men, there is an immediate benefit in prison discipline. The boxing program is set to channel some of the prison tough guys. Who normally get into a fight, well, without the, you know, the snap of the fingers, they would think twice now because they need their hands to fight. And they would rather do with gloves than without gloves. James Scott, the spearhead of Rawway's boxing program, is a prison celebrity, a role he's comfortable with. While he seems to inspire as much envy as admiration in other inmates, Prison officials feel his effect is beneficial. I think that it's you know just another expression of a, of a person's uh, desire to do something construct constructive while in jail, and I think that's what James Scott is doing. Scott's cell in Rawway is here in Three Wing, where after a reputation as incorrigible, he has been trying to beat his past to fight his way out of prison again. His first offense at age 13 was truancy. He spent the last 16 out of 18 years in prison. The most he's made out of prison as a boxer was $1,200 when he fought in Miami, Miami Beach for the Dundees. In prison, he makes $3 a day as a paraprofessional. This fight could begin another passage to freedom and a career. New, new surrounding. I had never been in prison before, and I was forced to do what anybody else had to do, survive. You've been in prison since 1960, most of your adolescent and adult life. Why should we believe that if you became champion and could come out of prison, that you can live outside of the prison and society? Well, first of all, uh, you got to remember that when I was in prison, uh, or when I was locked up, uh, I was young. I had no goals, no values. I spent 50 years in the room building, um, and uh, my trainer was down there. I spent 15 months down there. That's the worst place I've ever been in my life. And uh, I spent down there, and that gave me a chance to think. Uh, I think when a man is forced with thought, you know, under adversity, you're forced to think. That's when you begin to realize what are you going to do and what you have to do. And I think it was then that I really decided I've got to get a chance. I just got to make it. You know, I can't quit now. The hardest job in the institution is getting around the stuff in here. You, know, you have people that are envious. You have officers that are envious. Who, you know, or when I say envious, you know, will do anything they can to 
stifle your creative abilities and stop you from being successful. You know, like you got a lot of people who've done a lot of things and made a lot of mistakes. And we don't always bring up what you did in the past, you know. This is my first chance at exposure. I don't think I knew what to say back then. I wasn't ready back then, back in 1974. And Gregory is just an opportunity to expose to the public that there is somebody lurking behind the shadows, waiting for his opportunity. And he's much better than uh, the current light heavyweight contender that they have out there. It's gonna be a fight. If the other guy come in prepared to make it a boxing match, he's mistaken because he's gonna be in a war. My two colleagues, Don Dunphy, the well-known blow-by-blow announcer, and Sugar Ray Leonard, the well-await contender. Don, you've seen a few million fights in your time. Have you ever heard of a situation like this? Not really, uh, Larry, I haven't. And uh, if you were to ask me, has Scott got much of a chance, I'd say have to say off the cuff that I don't think so. I just can't conceive of an inmate in a prison uh, defeating the uh, number one light heavyweight contender. James Scott is a devastating puncher, but as the rounds progress, you will see that Eddie Gregory's, his experience was take his toll. What are your thoughts on the uh, moments before your big fight here? Well, this is like a homecoming to me because everybody know I did a little time myself and uh, it's really no problem. It's just gonna be me and James Scott. I'm not fighting the whole prison system. I'm just fighting James Scott, that's all. What kind of time did you do for what? Oh, like small things, burglary, uh, harassment. I beat up four cops, you know, small stuff like that. But isn't this a big risk for you? I mean, you have everything to lose here and not a whole lot to gain. Well, if you're going to be a fighter, you're going to be a fighter. I'm a fighter. I don't duck anyone. I consider myself the champion. I duck no one. I, if, it, if it means I have to come to prison and knock guys out, I'll be here. What's your prediction tonight? Well, I'm not going to predict, but this is going to be a technician-like job. I can't predict that I'm going to win the fight. Eddie, good luck to you. Thank you very much. Larry, it's, it's quite a bit cooler up here in the drill hall. Three large screens are uh, against the wall and the windows here. Hundreds of inmates are crowded in. I've got to tell you, highly partisan pro James Scott. They definitely feel their man's going to win it, right? That's going to win. James Scott all the way. Let's go downstairs to inside. You know, we, le you know, we learned earlier that even those, those inmates favor James Scott, that here at prison, the betting line is three cartons of cigarettes to one in favor of Gregory. <laughs> <laughs> There's no sentiment when it comes to betting. Tony Perez, the referee, has the instructions. They're trying to psych each other. They're really trying to psych each other. Hey, good punches by Scott. I tell you, it seems like Scott's trying to surprise everybody. The terrific wealth. It's hard to imagine the hopes and dreams of a man like James Scott coming to a culmination here like this. It must be an awesome feeling. There have been prisoners who have gone on, outstanding fighters outside of prison, of course. Here's a man doing it right inside prison. Only 10 seconds left. There will not be a knockout. Scott continues right to the end. There's the final bell. A big win for James Scott. Your attention, please. The winner. I want you to put this in the paper. I want to let me finish. I want this in writing. After I knock out Rossman, I'm going to give Gregory a rematch because he gave me a shot and he would, nobody else would do it. Gregory got the first shot at the title. Were you aware that he needed a knockout in the last few rounds? I told him in his ass, asked him, he's right over there. I said, boy, you need a knockout to win this here. I should run for you, but I'm going to bring it to you. Do you think your body shots told the difference? Uh, I think the head shots because uh, I didn't get to his body like I wanted to. And the head shots, confused him because he was dazed a few times. But I give Gregory for being credit for being the strongest fighter I ever fought in my life. 
because I hit him with some good shots. What can you do for a celebration here? What kind of celebration will you have? Mr. Hadrack and them got a, Mr. Hadrack and them got a steak dinner for me downstairs, and the fellas gonna carry me back to the ring, and I'm gonna lay up for two weeks and get ready for Rossman. That's my celebration.